Hey guys, so today I've got another Jenna Franson film to talk to you about, but I just want to say first of all, I'm recording this not in front of a window. I sort of started to record some of my videos in front of my big window where the light was coming in naturally and it looked better to start off with. But because the sun's getting a lot brighter now, thankfully, it's sort of making my face just bounce, which is not really a look I wanted to go for. But um, please leave comments in the um, comment box. Tell me if you prefer them like now or like say yesterday's video, last week's videos, where they're in front of the light. Um, I don't know, my face does sort of glow, but it's not a good glow. It's just like a big white mess. Um, but then maybe you don't think the quality is good enough when I'm not there, so let me know either way. Um, but today I'm going to be talking about She's the One, which I think is the oldest Jennifer DVD I've watched. This is 1997, and you can tell straight away, as soon as I started watching it, I was like, you can tell that isn't a modern film. I mean, this is 13 years old, which, it doesn't sound like that long. It, when you say 97, it doesn't sound that long ago, but when you say 13 years, it does. That was, what, series 3 of Friends, and you can sort of tell that by the way Jennifer looks. But I've, I've got to try and stop comparing Jennifer films to Friends. It's a really bad habit I've got, but I know that not every person who watches these films is a fan of Friends. Um, but this is the, the plot behind it is quite complicated. The whole story is quite complicated. Um, basically, it's about two brothers, Francis and Mickey. Francis Jenna gets called Fran or Franny throughout it, though. Um, and they both, in the beginning, they both sort of have weird relationships, and then within ten minutes, one of them's got married. And it was a quick wedding, you'll find out about that. And um, Francis, was mo Francis was already married to Renee, who is Jennifer's character. And then Mickey gets married to Maxine Ban, I want to say, I can't really pronounce her surname. Um, which is Hope, which is that character there. So they're both sort of living their lives, you know, they've sort of got weird relationships, you know. Um, Francis is going through a sort of dry patch with Renee and... Obviously, Mickey's just got married to, to Hope, so it was a very, very quick wedding. I think they knew each other four days, five days or something. Um, I can't remember exactly, but it was a very short time. So, 15 minutes in, and you can tell straight away that the relationships are very weird. And then this character, Cameron Diaz's character, Heather, comes in and stir it all up. Now, Heather, let's see if I can get this right, Heather was engaged to Mickey. Like, prior to when the story began, you know, we don't actually know they were engaged until it's said. So they were engaged and they broke up, and then it turns out that Francis has been having a six-month affair with Heather. Um, so that's, so he's having an affair with his brother's ex fiance Well, he's married. It's very complicated. Um, but that's a nice twist, you know, you just got sort, sort of two central male characters, three central female characters, fair enough. But it just takes so much, because there's so much information you're given within the first half an hour. I mean, the film's an hour and, I think it was an hour and a half, an hour and 35. And there's just so much information given in the first half an hour. You, you've got to really sort of organise your thoughts and sort of really think really quickly to sort of keep up with it. The plot itself is a nice idea, but I think there's so much going on. There's only basically one story. It's he's having an affair, he got married too quick and, she, and she's got like no idea what's going on. Um, so there's so much happening, but it's all based on one plot, so it's really quite confusing. Um, and also there was one part where I got confused by, you've got Renee's father is in it, and also Mickey and Francis's father in it, and when you've only seen both fathers once, it's kind of weird, because the way Renee's father was talking to Francis, it sounded like he was his own father, so it sounded like Francis was actually Renee's dad's son, whereas... The next, like two minutes afterwards, he went and called Renee his daughter. So I'm like, hang on, did Francis's dad just say that Renee was his daughter as well? That's weird incest. But then it turned out that it was just Renee's dad, and he was just friendly with Francis. So that was kind of scary for a moment there, and I thought this was a new twist. But no, it's fine. So it is confusing. You will have to think a lot to get your head around it. But when you do, which for me was about 45 minutes in, it's a lovely film. But you just have to be prepared to think. It's not one that you can watch when you're half asleep, you have to be on the ball. Um, but other than that, it's a, it's a really nice film, really enjoyable. Like I said, it is one of the oldest. In fact, I think it's probably the oldest Jennifer film I've watched. I'll have to check. I've got three more to go after this one, um, all of which I've heard good things about. This one I'd heard nothing about, so I wasn't really... It's Postman. So I wasn't really sure what it was going to be about. I, I hadn't read the plot. I sort of skimmed over the back, but that was it. Um, 
but it's, it's an alright film, it's not the best, it's probably the worst Jennifer film I've seen, but it's not appalling, you just have to be prepared to think. Um, it's directed by Edward Burns, who I'd not heard of before, or I thought I hadn't heard of him, but Edward actually plays Mickey. Um, now when a director is in the film as well, I'm always thinking that something's going to give. They're either going to put more into the acting or more into the directing of the film. Um, obviously sometimes it's fine, sometimes they're great both ways, but I think in this one more effort has been put into Mickey's, well, to Edward's acting as Mickey than the directing. It's not poorly directed, but it's not one of those films where you think, wow, that was amazingly directed. It's, it's, it's sort of in the middle, it's not too bad. Um, but yeah, so you've got Edward Burns playing Mickey, and then it's Mike McGlone who plays Francis, which is there. So two male actors I'd not heard of, and the one female I hadn't heard of, obviously I'd heard of Cameron Diaz and Jennifer Aniston. Um, but that's really nice. Um, Maxine, like I said, her name's Ban, I think. It looks German, it could be. Um, I'd not heard of her before, but she's a really nice actress, really great. So that's definitely a name I'm going to look out for in future films and things. Um, now as far as buying the DVD goes, I've got no idea how much it costs on its own. And on that note, I've never actually seen it on its own. But you get these box sets, which as you can see, they're very thin DVDs there. I mean, that's tiny compared to a normal, in fact, I've got a normal DVD here that's about half the size. Um, and this came in a Jen Franston box set, and I think I paid £10, and you're getting six, five or six DVDs. Um, in fact, oh, I can't see them from here. If I've got, this is the first one I've done, if I've got four more, see, I think you get five. Um, they're all lovely, and they've also got these really sweet little pictures of Jennifer on the side. It's really hard to see in the camera, but they're really nice. But that's definitely worth getting the box set. I mean, £6 is what you pay for a normal DVD, so it's really, really dirt cheap. Six ten. I think I got. You can get it on e Amazon for six pound, eBay about the same, and HMV for a tenner, depending on where you go. Um, but definitely worth seeing the price around. But even a tenner for five six DVDs, my memory's appalling. I think it's five. Um, a tenner for five DVDs. That's it's, it's nothing, is it? You know, not not now. Um, it is. A, this one is a fifteen. I, um, I think the rest are twelves. So there could be another fifteen in there. But this is a fifteen. So the box set itself, you're not going to get sold if you go in store if you're under fifteen. And by right, you shouldn't be watching this if you're under 15, but people do. Um, so it's, it's not a bad film. If you're a fan of Jennifer Aniston, watch it. She's not in it the most. In fact, out of all the characters, I think she's in it the least. But when she is in it, you think, yeah, that was a good piece of acting from Jennifer. You know, you really like the scene she's in. So it, And also, it sort of shows a different side to her, um, which is nice. So it's a really, really good film in the sense that it was well acted and things. All right, directed, great price. Plot, a bit confusing, but it is worth taking the time to understand. Um, please feel free to leave comments and things below. I'd love to know your thoughts. Maybe you thought it was really easy to understand, and maybe it's just me being an idiot. Um, please let me know. Um, that's all I want to say about this, so go and get it if you can. It's worth it's worth giving it the time of day, um, but if you're looking for something light-hearted at the end of an evening, it's not really that. But I think that's all I want to say about that, so I will see you next time. Bye, guys.